Now, unfortunately, it hasn't stopped raining long enough for me to take out all the wood from underneath the concrete pour. It's still sitting there. I will update you guys once we take all that out. Also, I wanted to include all the dimensions on my ramp. I'll include that in an updated video. But in this video, since it stopped raining for like two hours, you got two hours of free rain. It's been raining so much, I'm not gonna complain about it. So I got this little path right here. I can jump on of wood. That way my feet don't get all muddy. I hate dirty grip tape. So the first thing we'll talk about is the backside disaster. And then we'll go into the backside lip side, front side disaster and front side lip side. There's actually a lot of difference between front side and back side with these two tricks. The one thing that I want to get into right away is your feeding position. The big advantage to this trick is actually going to be having your front foot higher up on your board than you would think. So a lot of people think you're going to ollie into the disaster, which you can do. It takes some time. But even when you're ollieing into it, you do want your foot a lot higher. And the reasoning is for that is once you land into the disaster, it's going to be a lot easier to control. Also, thanks to everyone that watched the last video about how to ski mini ramps, the fundamentals, because now it kind of made me realize this is a good format for teaching tricks. I just did all these tricks like a bunch for like 15 minutes to really get an idea of like what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So the first thing I'll say, it's really important figuring this trick out, especially for a backside disaster. That's the first thing we're gonna dive into. It's just figuring out how to revert on flat. So you're just going forward and you're basically doing a backside 180 without popping at all. So it's a lot about your hips and your scooting. So like in the last video, I got a lot into like the churning. So you're gonna use that churning motion that I talked about. And what you're gonna do now is basically force yourself to lean back a little bit and dip that shoulder and keep that arm up to revert. So just like this, you can totally just be standing still. It's a little bit easier when you are moving though, because you have a little more momentum to turn. So just go up the ramp right here. It is a lot about pre-winding those shoulders and turning. You can make a little marker on the ground where you want to do it. That's it. Try to stay low. Like when you're turning, you don't have to be super high to keep all your weight. You can stay lower. And then as you push out, you can actually extend your body. So you're kind of low in the beginning of your initial 180 and then you're extending it as you go out. And then you're kind of like getting lower again. So that's the basics is just learning how to do those backside power sides essentially on flat because then the next thing you're gonna to need to figure out is how to actually just do that on the lip of the transition. Now, once you're nice and confident with doing those backside 180 power slides on flat, you can start taking it up to some coping. I think some pull coping is gonna be a little bit harder to do it on, although that's what I have on my mirror amp, so I'm gonna be showing you on pull coping. I would actually suggest learning this on noping. And what that means is just like, there's no coping, it's just concrete on the edge or you can learn it on pull coping, but this is gonna be a little bit harder to learn on for sure. For me, I can bonk it. So with the pull coping, I'm basically doing that scoot 180, but I'm bonking. And the big difference with this is I'm actually being very, very heavy on my back foot and I'm kind of leaning forward. So I'm heavy on my back foot so that it doesn't bonk out like too far because I want it to bonk up onto the deck. And I think that's the one thing that's hard with disaster sometimes is when you bonk it, it goes too far out and it's just, you end up getting in your truck. You can't turn it all the way up onto the deck. Ideally, you actually want to land up higher towards your front truck. And the reasoning for that is if you can do that, you can lock it up. Before I get into the lockup though, it's a, it's a big dance move. So when I think of this trick, I kind of think of like I'm bowling. Like imagine you're throwing a ball down the lane and you're, and you're pushing that back foot out to really like level it out. I don't know, that's like what pro bowlers do. They go, Phew. think about it that way. Like you're crossing your legs up essentially. So your front leg is staying more in place when you're going up and you're popping in your back leg is doing all the scoop and turning and kind of getting around your front leg. The other thing I was mentioning is like this locking technique. I used to do this quite a lot when I was like pretty uncomfortable with backside disasters. As I've gotten more comfortable, I'm kind of good with just going straight in, but the lock spot is really nice so that you know you're in there and you can kind of wait to go back in. Cause a lot of times when you're doing back disaster, it's kind of scary to go straight in. You want to land, get comfortable and then go in if you're a beginner at this trick and never done before or you just wanna figure out a different way to do it. And this can actually be a big advantage to like learning sugar canes in the future, which is a trick I'm still working on learning. So anyways, when you get into this backside disaster, you get distracted, ADHD. You can push that back foot even more. And when I say lock spots like this, so essentially your front truck is against the coping over here, this back truck, and then your board is sideways with the coping. So right here, it's kind of locked. And the point from there is nice is that you can't like slip out from you know, like a lip slide or anything like that. You're kind of locked in. And the nice part there is it helps you get forward. So if you're locked like this and you actually go forward, a lot of times your board's actually gonna move out and go out straight. And when it comes to rolling in, 
over you know the lift whether it be noping or pull coping if you're skiing in the pull coping it is a lot about rolling that front foot like i mentioned in the basics mini ramp video and getting that leverage to pull it back over also as long as you're in the front and you keep a lot of your weight in the front and not too much weight in your back meaning you're leaning forward but you have more of a center of gravity and you're not just sitting in the back seat it is less likely that you're going to hang up but if you're sitting in the back seat like keeping that foot heavy uh the whole time it's actually gonna be a disadvantage once you start coming in so you want to keep that foot heavy but as soon as you lock or you land you want to start shifting all your pressure to the front your front knee your front leg and keeping everything up there so that it's lighter in the back truck less hang up factor and then as soon as you're over that coping right away baby now let's get into some of the fundamentals and the differences in between the backside disaster and the backside lip slide. So essentially, once you're comfortable enough with the backside disasters, you figured it out, you can start doing the backside lip slide. This is a trick that actually took me a long time to start sliding. A lot of people actually backside disaster and they make it look like a slide and they go straight in. It's not really a slide. It's almost like all one motion. You kind of slide maybe for like 10 seconds. The big difference in between back D and back disaster is actually how you land in it. And like I was saying before, there's that lock spot where you kind of like cross lock your board and then go back in. The big advantage here is actually to not cross lock and actually try to stay in your front truck area. It's gonna sound crazy, but I think it was like Evan Mock that I saw a clip in New York City, Chelsea Bull doing a backside lip side and it almost unlocked it for me once I saw that clip. The way he was doing it was he's keeping his front foot up here and it was sliding on the front of the board. So it was less of a balance act. And I think that's the important part to take away from here. You're not trying to balance it, like sliding in the middle of your board, like a board side or a lip side or anything like that. You're actually kind of balancing it in that front area of your truck and your rails. Rails are gonna be a big, big advantage to the trick. I should have mentioned that for backside lip side and front side lip side. Without the rails right now, I probably wouldn't be able to slide them like I am on this ramp. So big advantage to having rails with skating transition for sure. The thing about the backside disaster is you really can go pretty straight up and use that to your advantage to kind of get that cross lock and go back down. With the backside lip side, it's a lot less straight up and down. It really is about actually drawing it out really far. So big difference, like I said, when I'm doing back lift, I'm trying to go like this so that when I turn and I go into that disaster, I'm already more close to the front. Where you feel like this, you have a lot more to turn and get into the front of the board. Where if I draw it out, I can kind of land in the front of the board. Now from here, it's really about using that front foot to balance on your concave of your nose. And I'll show you what I mean by that. It's like keeping that front foot literally like this. And that's really the whole lip slide. That's the whole thing of backside lip slide is that. And keeping your shoulders over your board the whole time. So really you want this. That's kind of the motion right there. It's keeping your shoulder parallel with where that foot is in that pocket spot. Your shoulders just kind of dipped right in there. And the big hardest part about this is actually just holding it and doing nothing. It's kind of like a front side board side on flat or anything like that. You really do have to like hold that shoulder, meaning you're not dropping it. Cause as soon as you drop it, you're gonna fall in. You actually want to cross it. So you almost want to hold your shoulder against you while you're looking over it. And that's gonna kind of be your balance point. And then once you hold it long enough to where you feel like you can bring it back in, the one tip I have, instead of trying to go straight in, is try to do the same thing as you did when you rolled into it. So try to go out a little more sideways, if you can. A lot of times I end up going back this way, reverting, whatever, <laughs> kind of wild. But yeah, the one thing is, it could also helps to, to your advantage. You can do this front side, lip side, and back side, lip side. Because you actually get your wheels down before you commit and you start rolling back in. You get your wheels, as you're going sideways, you kind of do a little power slide just with your front wheels. And you could power slide to get your back truck over it and back in. Hard part about back to disaster, you can't do that because you're not really rolling. So when you're lip sliding, you can definitely use that to your advantage. You're sliding and you just ever so slightly press on that nose concave spot that we talked about. You're gonna get a little leverage and you can use that. That's probably why you hear some of my wheels sliding out on the previous lip sides that you're watching. Essentially, I'm sliding with my front wheels and I'm sliding on the transition right now, my whole body. And then I'm sliding my back wheels a little bit. That kind of just helps you so you're not doing too much of a leverage. You don't want to get up too high. It's a lot harder to come in. You want to keep your board nice and low so that it's just less going on with your upper body. Now it's funny how skateboarding works because front side disaster actually be, used to be a lot easier for me. Now it's a lot harder. I think it's just because it's like playing cards. You know, you learned a different trick, you get rid of a, another trick. Peter Hewitt once said that to me. But the big thing here, it's like more of a huck. So it's less of the scoop action that we talked about into the backside disaster. We really scoop and use that cross lock motion 
front sight is a lot different. I think it's a lot more about like almost alling 180 off a curb. So it's less of that power slide like we were talking about earlier, where you can just like backside power slide into it. And it's more of a huck. You almost have to like front side 180 ollie a little bit. I think going off a curb, like a front side 180 off a curb would be really helpful. And the reason it's gonna be helpful is you're gonna figure out how to get you know, that rotation, not only that rotation, but how to clear your front nose off the curb. Cause it's the same thing with the coping essentially. It's like really hard. What I did quite a lot of times is actually when learning this trick, I would get into chuck bash or I'd get into the back of my truck. I couldn't get all the way up. So the big thing with this is actually sitting more in the back seat and then hucking your body 180 up and then trying to get your chest over it once you're already off the lip. So with the backside disaster, you're kind of already pre-winding, you're already doing that before. With the front side disaster, you actually have to go off the lip and then land in it. Then you lock your shoulders. I think it's a little bit different than backside disaster in that sense. So it's definitely more of an ollie and less of a scoop. And then the other big difference with the front side disaster, it's actually a lot harder to just disaster than it is to slide in my opinion. And I think that's because essentially you are doing that huck, right? So you're kind of like sending it into there. And what I'm saying huck is like you're scooping with your back, you know, board. You're kind of doing a little more of an ollie and less of a scoop. So you're ollieing into it. And then from there, you're kind of already, your back is leaned back. So you, it's, you tend to slide out. At least I tend to slide out. The one thing that you can try to do uh, to sort of combat that is get really on top of it and do the same thing that we talked about before. You can kind of cross lock it a little bit, cross your board a little bit, and then go back in. Same way as backside disaster. Coming into a frontside disaster is similar to backside. You just have to use that same uh, rolling of your foot, rolling your ankle on your nose technique. I think that really helps as well as sliding it. That is the big advantage for front side disaster versus back side disaster. You can't really slide your wheels. With front side, you can. So once you're up there, you can actually slide your wheels just slightly to get you out of it. You don't have to roll straight out like some people do. Again, this is a trick that I haven't done in quite a while. Actually trying this is like, wow, I need to do more of these. The one advantage I would say with this one is actually doing an ollie from low to high. So there's a couple, there's two different ways essentially that I've been doing it. I've been going off the coping kind of launching into it and just like sort of uh, doing this pendulum, hucking my body, my arms, like we talked about in the last video. And then the other one is actually alling low and up into it, which I think can be easier at times, to be honest. So you want to ollie even lower, probably like foot, two feet lower, and then snap in 180 onto the deck. And this is going to be a big advantage for like street skaters. If you're a street skater learning how to skate transition, I would suggest actually learning the ollie technique into it because it's going to be a big advantage when you go to like say big transition too. When you're skating really big transition, it's nice to be able to ollie really low and up onto it. You can't really do the whole hucking off the coping technique that I was just doing on this ramp. So the last uh, tip suggestion I have for front side lip side is, or I didn't really get too much in the front side lip side, but essentially it's pretty similar as a front side disaster. The only difference is you're really using that same spot as you did with the back side, lip side. And a lot of it is that it's this, it's this cross lock and keeping your board up in the front, your slide up in the front, that's what I'll say. So whether it be pull coping, noping, whatever it is, you wanna slide up here. I think a lot of times people get missed conceive of the sliding right in the middle of the board. It does happen, but when you're thinking about it and you're aiming for it and you're going for the lip side, front side or back side, try to think of it as you're sliding up here and you're using this base plate basically from your front truck to lock you in. So you're having to do less of this uh, balance act and you're locked in. And then when you do want to go in, you slowly slide off. Hope these couple tips help. This one's not as thorough as the last video, but I just figured I'd get a little session because like I said, it's been raining like crazy. Let me know any trick tips you want on mini ramps down below and uh, we'll get them done as soon as this weather stops. I love you all. Sorry for all the complaining. Mash.